have to excuse the mess in here a little bit. As you can see, these plants have been um, dropping their leaves a little bit. That's because I used some dish soap to try and get rid of the aphids and apparently it's very effective at getting rid of the aphids. But it's also very effective at destroying the oils in the leaves. So what happens is this natural sheen on them breaks down and then it's especially visible on the back here the actual cell walls of the leaf they look like they've been eaten by the washing up liquid obviously the plant doesn't like that you know a bit of pruning will allow them to branch out and eventually produce more flower buds so yeah this plant is growing in a very pretty bottle it's an Arizona iced tea bottle I'm not actually sure what this is it came up as a volunteer plant now normally I'd just leave them alone but it had dark foliage I've had a few flowers open, they're definitely not annual flowers they're more likely chinens flowers or something else entirely But I mean it's produced pollen but no fruit as is the case with most of the peppers in here um, I've been really having some issues with getting them to fruit but you know I, I think I've fixed that now it's just that this failure um, it really set me back quite a bit. So I had, this is my ghost pepper plant um, with seeds I got from a trader in the Swindon uh, Chili and Cheese Festival. So I'm naming the pheno that I get the Swindon Ghost. I've given all of the plants, you know, the thorough spray down with water now. So hopefully the rest of that dish soap is actually off. Not going to continue to eat away at the cell walls. This plant is really not looking happy. You know, I'm not sure whether they, the lack of green coloration is because of the washing up liquid or the fact that I just haven't fed this plant in a few weeks to try and get it to set fruit. And, you know, it did work. Actually, I did manage to get it to set two peppers, but at some point they dropped off. So I was very close to getting some ghost peppers. It'll happen, you know, I'm not in any kind of rush, it's just frustrating. But this plant's been alive for maybe about six, eight months, and I'm using, to light it up, I'm using, I'm using that um, QB 1000 watt job from the Yellow. It's doing a really good job, it's really high up at the moment because after I rinsed all that dish soap off, um, I didn't really want you know, drop it of water to stay on the plant and have it burn, so I raised the light up. I think I'm ready to bring it back down now. Um, hopefully it will recover fully. I expect it will. And then there's this one, which is what I thought was a Brazilian starfish, and looking at the, the fruit on it, it does kind of resemble Brazilian starfish. But the thing is, this plant's definitely a Chinense variety because of the, because of the flowers. It's definitely not a Bacatum. Uh, or at least solely a Bacatum. I expect it's probably a cross. And as you can kind of see there in the, on the camera that it's got some kind of peach or purpley coloration to it. It's kind of getting a suntan from un being under the lights. It'll be interesting to see what color, what final color actually changes to. That would be a really nice kind of pepper. I mean, I had hundreds and hundreds of flowers on this plant, but only one of them actually set fruit. It's just that kind of ongoing problem that I've been having of, you know, I've changed the light, I've changed the nutrients, I've, I've changed pretty much everything, you know, and getting them to fruit is a bit of a struggle. And this is either a caramel scorpion or a chocolate reaper. I don't know which is which on any of these plants because, you know, I didn't bother labeling them because I'm going to know eventually. <clears throat> and this one got hit pretty rough by what I did to it a few days ago. Um, you know, it's, re it's really quite bad, this one. I wouldn't be surprised if it lost most of its leaves. Um, I mean, the reason I did it was to get rid of aphids, and I haven't really found many aphids since. And the ones that I did find were kind of, you know, kind of dying, kind of brown. Definitely in a bad way. They probably would have died if I hadn't squished them. But yeah, this plant should go on to recover I imagine I can't see any of these plants dying I think you know the worst that's going to happen is I'm going to lose 
a few of these side shoots entirely but I don't even think that'll happen to be honest. We are now two days later um, because when I was filming last time um, I started filming at quarter past eight in the evening and my lights go off at half past eight so I didn't really give myself enough time to film and the lights went off halfway through the video so I'm back a couple of days later. Um, I can't really remember which plants I've shown now and which ones I haven't. If I reach here and grab this one, this one was really badly affected actually by what I did to it. Very few leaves on it and the few leaves that are on it they seem to be doing all right. So I'm just kind of, you can kind of see that the growth there doesn't look good at all. That whole entire branch looks really bad. Um, you know, I'm kind of mad at myself for doing it to be honest, but it's not the most devastating thing in the world. I did find an aphid earlier, so of course those bastards survived. Over here I've got, on my grow shelves, I've got, uh, this is a Hallow's Eve, it's in a very nice can. Unfortunately it hasn't really grown at all in the last two months. Um, I think it had a bit of a problem with edema, but it just hasn't really recovered, hasn't really started bouncing back. There's no real sign of life in it. I'm hoping it will pick up again, it's just one of those annoying things. Up here I've got Thor's Thunderbolt in a hydroponic setup. Nice little cherry coke can, they're pretty good show that. Yeah the roots uh, they're a bit gunky at the moment because I did a I misbalanced the pH but I've corrected that now and got nice green growth at the top there. That should should help the plant come back. Over here is a gift from my friend the seed tour. We did a little bit of a seed swap. Um this is a Batman Bubblegum 7 orange and I did actually mess up the nutrients on this one, um, it, was, it went really yellow for a while but then I gave it some nutrients, pH balanced them and it bounced back pretty well to be honest. These two down here they're a kind of ornamental Thai variety and it's called Medusa which is good again these are in hydro, um, they've got quite nice root system on there, lots of algae in there but that's not a problem really. Um, the only problem really is that the algae might steal the nutrients, but you know, I change the nutrients every few days. So, plant back here, sugar rush peach cross with a ghost. Hasn't really done an awful lot of growing, to be honest. I've just been feeding it water since. And now, over here, this sorry looking bunch peppers. These are matapinos, as you can see. I absolutely ruined the leaves, the first set of leaves, with that washing up liquid spray. It's unfortunate, but um, as you can see there, kind of, you can kind of see that. I'm a bit close. Um, they got their true leaves coming in, they look quite white, which is nice. And next to it, that purple leaf plant there is a purple flash. Um, and these two plants here are medusas. Now what I'm hoping to do is keep one of the medusas, keep one purple flash, and then keep the two metapinos, and then grow them all together and hopefully make some crosses with them. I think that would be very nice. This back here is basil. You know, it's just generic basil. I got from Garden Centre. Seems to be doing pretty well at the moment. It's, it really smells quite nice. Um, I say it's meant to attract aphids. So, you know, I'll plant that away from my peppers and hopefully that will help when it goes outside. Uh, here, one of three Yellow ghostly jalapenos, as you can see, uh, you know, it's got nice uh, tree leaves coming through. It's looking quite healthy. I've started bottom watering using this big tray thing. I think I'm going to order a couple more of these because they're really quite useful for watering. Um, and over here we've got, uh, starting from the back, what I can remember. I've got this drawn out on a diagram on my phone. Um, so I definitely know what they all are. It's just a question of, you know, I can't recall them from memory. I think that plant back there, the one with four um, baby leaves, is a uh, death spiral. Um, 
true leaves when when they've got four cotyledons they actually push through two pairs of true leaves this is like a twin so i'm just i'm curious to see how well that does next to its sibling um and these up here i can't for the life of me remember what they are no i can't remember i'll probably put it in the video and that one next to it is black jacaris i think that's a really cool name obviously game of thrones fan cool name i haven't really seen much about this pepper i don't really know anything about what has been crossed into it other than the fact that it looks cool. Uh, that one down there, that little nub, is one of two seeds that I got and only one of them germinated, again from my friend Cosmo. This is a dragon's breath, it's supposedly the hottest pepper in the world, um, even hotter than the Carolina Reaper. Um, there's no evidence to back that up, but you know, I believe him, I believe him. Um, and then the one next to it that's really it kind of looks like it's stretched, but I think it's just because it came up at night. I don't think these lights are too bad. Uh, this is a white Fatale. I'm really, really excited to be growing that. I think it's the only white pepper that I'm actually growing this year. So that's nice. And that one next to it, uh, I think is a Gourmet Fatale Jigsaw, which is really cool, found in name. I haven't really seen too much about that pepper, so I'm really excited to grow it. And next to it... I can't remember what that one is either, I'll put that in the video as well. Uh, and then moving on, these back here are Pimenta Peach Jalokia, so uh, Peach Ghosts, I think. Really cool, all three of them came up. They were the first, um, well, among the first to emerge. I think they were the first in this tray to emerge. And what this tray is, is an old meat container, uh, just from the supermarket. Helps me save a bit of money. Uh, that one back there is a CGN 24360, I think, possibly. Might be wrong with the numbers there. It's quite a hard thing to remember. These two here at the front, they are um, more ghostly jalapenos. They're doing really good. Um, and then behind it, I've got... And these two here are Hallow's Eve. And uh, this one, it's an Inca Red, I think. I got that from Pepper Merchant. And now, so if we move down to the next shelf. Uh, this is a, a Why Not? I think it's the F2. Um, I got it from Barry Gill on Facebook. I won a competition. It's looking pretty good. Uh, I think it's a bit stunted, but I recall... Oh yeah, yeah, we got roots coming through the bomb. So, yeah, it'll, it'll definitely take off once it starts taking in some hydroponic nutrients. Uh, another plant from Matt's Peppers Seeds that I have absolutely toasted. Um, this is a Naga, I think it's a Naga Viper crossed with a Pink Tiger. Or just a Naga, I can't really remember. This one, this one's quite special. This is one of my crosses. Well, I say one of my crosses, it's my only cross. It's an EK5 crossed with a Purple Tiger. Now you can tell the cross is taken because Purple tigers, you know, they don't really usually go this dark. And got all the variegation in the top as well. Which is definitely purple tiger more so than the UK5, so that's really good. And then over here we've got more of um, ghost pepper crossed with sugar rush peach. That just sounds like a recipe for a pepper that's going to take a very long time to ripen. And this is by far my best root system. Um, I was growing in a mayonnaise jar. As you can see, the root system is absolutely crazy on this one. And the plants really haven't really grown that much, to be honest. Despite having that big of a root system, they haven't really started growing. But I guess that's just what these plants do. They fill out their containers first, and then they start growing. So put them back there. And... Got yellow fatale, which seems to be growing a little bit faster than it used to now, which is really good. Uh, and then over there, Kang Star Lemon Starburst. I'm not going to bother getting that one out. That one has been really stunted since I started it. I definitely messed them around when I started them, so I think that's probably the reason why they're not looking so happy. Uh, and then down to the bottom shelf, this is really depressing and sad. This is supposed to be a harbour reaper 
I sprayed it a lot because I find aphids on it, um, which is why it's on the bottom shelf coincidentally because I don't really want to spread the aphids around to the top, even though it might be inevitable. I don't want to do it. Um, but yeah, the growth looks horrible. New growth looks slightly better than the old growth, but it's still really poor. I am so sorry for this one. I really hope that it fixes itself. Um, and over here, you've got my fenugreek. Fenugreek's doing great. Um, the reason it's on the bottom shelf is because I found aphids on it. Um, I think I got them all. But, you know, you can never really be too sure. So, this is the isolation room down here. Uh, go over some of the automation I've got in here. So, I've got. This is a uh, Raspberry Pi Zero wireless. Got connected to it a humidity and temperature sensor, and so I wrote a Python script that um, communicates with two Wi-Fi plugs. One of the Wi-Fi plugs is connected to this extension lead down here, and what that does at 8:30 every morning, it turns my lights on, or it turns this power strip on, which turns my lights on. Um, and then at half eight at night, it does the same thing, but it turns it off, um, and that just runs continuously on a loop. Um, and also using this, I've got it communicating with the other, um, the other smart plug, which is connected to this extension lead down here, which goes to this fan. And what this fan does is it runs for three minutes every three minutes. So it might even be on now. But yeah, this will eventually, you know, automatically come on and I'll be able to show it in the video. But yeah, I wrote a script to that. Um, so I've got it set with my operating system on here as a well, I've got my background service so that if I unplugged it, if the power went out um, and then it got plugged back in or power came back on, um, it would resume the service immediately as soon as it boots up. So it's running continuously. Nothing can stop it, essentially, unless I disable the service, which I think is really cool, because, you know, if I ever go out for whatever reason for a few days, I can um, I can use this thing to control uh, temperature with my lights and um, air circulation with a fan. And just on cue, it's turned on. So yeah, that's my tent tour, I guess. Thanks for watching.